The newsroom contains language and subject matter that some viewers may find offensive. We recommend viewer discretion. So we're going to Florida to catch the Jay Spring training. Flight's at 6.30, we want to leave from here. He, he's bored hanging around the apartment, so I told him he could come down and hang around here for a couple of hours, maybe watch you package the show. Is that okay? Hang around? Is he in the business? News? No, uh, he, he's a comic. Stand up. Comic? Did you see this? Oh, yes, I heard. Congratulations. Yeah, 12 years in this place, and they finally acknowledged me. What level? P3. Spot 66, right next to handicapped parking. That's my old spot. How'd you finally pull it off? Oh, I told them that um, I had a foot problem, and I couldn't walk from the outdoor lot. My application was in the system for two years. I finally nailed it. Oh, yes, yeah, the old so-called foot problem to get painkillers routine. <laughs> I had real pain. Don't we all? <laughs> Wait a second. Why did you give up that spot? There was something leaking from the ceiling down under the hood of my car. Something leaking? Yeah, some kind of white, gooey, abrasive guck. You know, trying to wipe it off, it would just take the paint right with it. You took the paint off? Yeah, I'd get that checked if I were you. It just ruined my car. You know what this is? No. My bear hunting license. This little piece of paper gives me the right to shoot one fully grown black bear. It's such a rush, I can't wait. Sounds like fun. Yeah. So you shoot the male, then you rape the female? Oh, okay, okay, I get it. Oh, hunting is evil, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the big bad hunter with the high-powered rifle against the poor defenseless creature in nature. Yeah. So you're going to eat the bear? Look, let me tell you something. If we don't shoot them, they overproduce, and you can pretty much kiss the balance of nature up there. Goodbye. Oh, so you're doing God's work? You got that right, asshole. Well, that's the reason she gave up the spot, because the ship was dropping onto her car. Yeah, well, well, fix the ceiling. You're the parking guy. Fix it. Well, then, yes, then get me mechanical. Yes, I'll hold. Thank you. I'll just put this down here out of your way. Um, it's only 10.30. Uh, she said your flight wasn't leaving till 6.30. Aren't you here a little early? Oh, yeah, but I can't stay at her place. It drives me crazy. She's got cats. I, I got friggin' cat hair all over my alpaca sweater. Just ignore me. We'll be out of here by five tops. Mind if I smoke? Uh, there's a building regulation against. Don't worry about it. I'll just get the door. Do you want one? No. Bosnia. Bosnia. There's one town I'm not in a big rush to see. You know who won the Miss Bosnia beauty pageant? No. Nobody. Are you finished drinking that? Yeah. Great. Thanks. This was on your voicemail. Now, there's been talk among upper management about the way you've handled a number of stories recently on this government, and I think we should... That's it? That's all? Yeah, that's all. The voicemail still screwed up. Hmm. Who was it? I have no idea who that voice was. When are they going to fix this goddamn thing? Today, supposedly. What stories is he talking about? Um, I have no idea. Listen, ignore this, right? Okay? This is bullshit. If you let these guys bug you with every one of their little complaints, you can never do this job. Just ignore it. Don't think about it. Here's the voice message I want you to hear. Listen to this. And there's been talk among upper management about the way you've handled a number of stories recently on this government, and I think we should... That's all there was. What stories was he talking about? I don't know what story he's talking about. The, the voicemail's completely screwed up. <laughs> voicemail. Always something new. Well, whenever the brass needs its dirty work done, Paul Thomas is the guy with the bad news. How do you know it's bad news? When's the last time they called you with good news? He's right. He's right. Good news, bad news. Quick one. Guy walks into the doctor's office. He said, I got some good news for you, I got some bad news for you. The bad news is you only got one month to live. Good news? You see that gorgeous receptionist you pass on the way in? I'm banging her twice a week. They can't face you, so they send voicemail. 
There goes our great tradition of journalistic independence. These gutless messages, it's fucking censorship. You know what you do? You call them up and you say, listen, if you don't like the way I'm running the news, you can fire me. Counterattack and the whole thing will go away. Best defense is a good offense. He's right. He's right. Voicemail. Paul, this is George Finley returning your call. If someone from upstairs thinks that they can just call up and influence how I do this news, they're playing a very dangerous game. Uh, journalistic independence is an absolutely basic principle of news producing. If they can't uh, deal with their own petty little fears, then they can just take those fears and, and uh, uh, you know, shove them up their tight little asses, Paul. And if they have a problem with that, I can just quit, okay? Goodbye. So? I wouldn't have said I can quit, but other than that, I think it was great. You said I should threaten to quit. No, we said tell them they can fire you. There's a difference. See, they need cause to fire you. She's right. I mean, the ball's in their court now. You offered to quit. So I said I'd quit to this gutless guy, Paul Thomas. You said yourselves he's the messenger boy. He has no power. But you left it on his voicemail. Mistake. It's like paper. You never commit this stuff to paper. Never leave voicemail, rule one. Never quit. You do the gig, take the dough. Can you break into his voicemail and erase my message? Everyone has a six number code that accesses their mailbox. Most people pick six fives or six sixes or six sevens. So technically, I could dial his extension and run through all nine digits six times each, but I won't on principle. Well, there happens to be a higher principle operating here. It's a principle of nature called self-preservation. Yours or mine? Yours. What's the message? I got into Paul Thomas's mailbox. Did you erase my message? Your message was gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? I guess he listened to it and erased it. Oh, God. Could he have dumped it onto somebody else's mailbox before he erased it? Yeah. Oh, then it could be out there in the system. It could be in the system. I heard something uh -huh. else on his voicemail. Yeah, and, and, and he's got that whole bowel problem. God, he's still here. Ignore him, ignore him. What did you hear? His last message. I took the liberty of putting it on your private line mailbox. This is totally illegal. Don't worry about it. We're all adults here. This was brilliant. You're perfect. This is fantastic. Uh-huh. Arnie Gordon, it's, it's the prostate thing. At least he's not as bad off as his brother. They gotta put plastic everywhere. Yeah, bye. It's my buddy, he's in the hospital. It's a bowel thing. You don't wanna know about it. That was the message? That was a guy by the name of Bob thanking Paul Thomas for sending Bob the message that I sent to Paul Thomas. I know. Who's Bob? I don't know. It could be Vice President Business Affairs and Corporate Development, Bob Coleman. Vice President Planning and Regulatory Affairs, Bob Stoltz. Vice President Media Accountability and Regional Broadcasting Operations, Robert Johnstone. It's Robert. Bob. Um, Executive Assistant to the Vice President of News and Current Affairs, Bob Hubert. How many Bobs are there for Christy? I found 11 bobs with enough power to have you fired. Of the 11 bobs with potentially enough power to fire you, there's only five who would ever exercise that power. Bob Coleman, Bob Hubert, Bob Johnston, Bob Gaffney, Bob Seymour. Oh, God. What are you doing here? I'm here because he's in there, OK? Uh, sitting in there. You said he was going to come after lunch. Well, that, that, that's typical of Vince. He, he can't just sit in a room. He, he's a presence. Well, I have no idea what you see in this man. Makes me laugh. Oh, I spoke to uh, Paul Thomas. He claims he never sent you any voicemail. It wasn't Paul Thomas? No, but he wasn't terribly happy about the message you left him. That was a mistake. Didn't you tell him that was a mistake? Well, he thought it was. So he passed it on to the person who actually phoned you. Yes, Bob. But Bob who? That's the name I need. Well, he wouldn't say. Very political up there. You're my boss. Why don't they come to you if they